Hey everyone, Dee here. In this video, I'll be attempting to redraw an old artwork of mine, which we'll take a look at in just a minute, but first I wanted to show you some of my painting prep work. Of course, taping down watercolor paper is a must, but something I like to do from time to time is to have the subjects of my painting breaking the border of the tape, just to give it more of an interesting look. And so here I'm using a light box so I can mark the lines from my drawing to cut out of the tape border. Is it when I'm holding this pointy thing that I tell you to subscribe? So very carefully, I cut just on the line I drew, trying to cut through just the tape and not the paper. The subjects in my original painting are breaking the border in this same way, so I wanted to carry that over into this painting as well. Now to take a look at the original. I painted this for a video on my channel one year ago. Oh man, I was thinking it was much longer. I did a couple videos where I found a random color palette on Google and tried to make an artwork with it, and this was the result of one of those. This painting is much bigger than I remember. I still really like the concept, the subjects, and the composition. The colors aren't necessarily what I would have chosen, but that was the point of the challenge. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in me doing a random color palette challenge video. So I need to figure out what colors I'm using to get my new painting as close as possible to the original. I'll be using my Komarebi watercolor set, and here you can see all the beautiful swatches in this set, but to be exact, I'll need to do some mixing. To know which colors I need to mix, I'll be using my handy dandy color mixing chart. I made this using a 24 color gouache paint set, but a lot of the colors are really similar, so it'll work for my watercolor paints as well. So I just hold the painting up to the chart and look back and forth between the two at the colors I'm trying to match until I find one. Starting with her hair, there's a cluster of oranges that look pretty close, so I eyeball it as best I can to find a good match. This one looks pretty good. Then I follow each row from that square to see which two colors I need to mix to make it. Once I know my recipes, I get a scrap piece of watercolor paper to do some color matching swatches next to the original painting. This gives me a good visual that I do, in fact, have the correct color mixes. On the original painting, I used a masking fluid pen, but I don't like using the pen anymore because it got clogged up really easily and was just difficult to use in general. Now I use this jar of masking fluid, which is much better in my opinion. And I'm using a dotting tool to apply it. This stuff dries pretty quickly, and it goes on white but dries yellow. It doesn't stain the paper at all, and it comes off really easily without ripping the paper. And it does a great job at protecting the white of the paper underneath so I can paint over the area without worrying about getting color there. All the items I use will be linked in the description. I could say that in the original painting, the girl's pose is meant to be captivated or engaged with the butterfly, and that's why she's sitting up so straight. But in reality, I was meaning for her pose to be more relaxed and leaning back. I think I captured that much better in the new painting. The pose would still make sense in the original because, I mean, come on, a giant glowing butterfly would capture anyone's attention and their body language would show them being at alert. But the idea behind this painting was that since I'm using a limited color palette, the girl and the butterfly are made up of the same colors, meaning they're connected somehow. I don't know how that's as far as I got. I do think my people drawing skills have improved. But because I ended up drawing this so much smaller than the original, I wasn't able to get as much detail on her as I would have liked. I tried to focus on leveling this painting up in terms of detail on the butterfly and the glowing effect, so I made the shadows on her more apparent. On the original painting, I think I just painted the right half of her face yellow. Back then, I also didn't understand the importance of angles of the face, so at this perspective we are seeing the side of each of the characters, so we see them in profile. 
In the original, I drew the girl's face looking right at us, even though she's looking at the butterfly. It's strange how I didn't notice it back then, but then again, I was still very new to drawing and painting. At the time I painted the original, I was actually quite proud of it, but looking at it now, I realize it's not very good. Even this new painting, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out in the end, but it still doesn't quite capture the vision I had for it, and that's just because I still have a lot to learn in terms of technique, so maybe I'll try this painting again in the future. Remind me in a few years, okay? After adding some finishing touches with a white Posca pen, it's all done. And here are the two of them side by side. I really messed up the sizing. I only looked at a digital image of the original before I drew the new one, so I made it too small. Do you think I've improved? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it, subscribe for more artsy videos each week and an art live stream on Saturdays, and turn your notifications on so you never miss when I go live. Thanks for watching, see ya!